So good morning and welcome to the last video of this series. Um, I wanted to start it out with showing you this was the print we did last night. The one that is exposed, bleached, and toned. And then I made a paper with the 5% solution I was talking about just so I could show, make another exposure and show you what these two should look like separate. So this is what the second layer should look like without the first layer and separated they don't look like much they just look like a, a toned and an untoned cyanotype um, but we're going to get into that but I just wanted to start out the video with kind of showing you a comparison of what each layer will look like individually they won't look exactly like this because of that interaction when you coat when you coat over uh, the toned layer it turns kind of a greenish blue because there is a reaction with the cyanotype solution and the tannins in the paper so we'll have to that's why we're there's a few things I want to show you to try to help mitigate that as much as possible along with steps I showed you in the previous video so uh, I'm going to go over the formula now for the next layer and then we'll get on with coating the paper so before we go into actually coating, this is another critical point. Um, layer 2 is the 5% 5% solution. So the easiest thing to do is mix, mix the solutions the exact same as you would in step 1 of the, or I should say, of the layer 1. Um, and that's a 10 and 10 solution. And then you dilute that with an equal amount of distilled water. And that makes it a 5% solution. So it's critical that this is 5% solution for the second layer. For two reasons. One, that the less amount of uh, the citrate is in there, the less that interaction with the tannic acid is apparent. And two, it's giving us better control of the cyan layer to make the colors more accurate or more um, more visible. So this is a critical component of this layer. So the boring part is we go over all this, we coat it, we have to you know dry it a little quicker just to make sure it doesn't have that interaction, let it dry completely, and then we can actually expose and see if all this stuff actually does anything. <laughs> so we're going to go on and get on with uh, coating the paper. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is mix up our 5% formula. So I'm going to start with, I'm not going to make near as much as I made last time because it's going to be diluted down. So I'm going to get 10 milliliters of solution A in here. So I've got 10 solution A. Now I'm going to measure out 10 of solution B. And remember, these are the 10 and 10. So we're starting out with the 10 and 10 formula to begin with. All right, so here's 10 of solution B. So that's 20 milliliters total of 10% solution. So there, start around, mix it up. There is a 10% solution just like with layer 1. Now we know that that's 20 milliliters, so we need to add 20 milliliters of distilled water to that, and I'm going to measure that out. Okay, so I have 20 milliliters of distilled water, plus it kind of helps flush the, the cylinder out of here. So I'm going to add that to this, and stir it up. And we now have a 5% solution. 5% uh, ferric ammonia citrate and 5% potassium ferric cyanide. So that is ready to go. I'm going to put my one brush in there and start soaking and then we're going to go get our uh, papers or papers with layer one I should say. Okay so we have everything together. We have our paper here for over brushing. Um, I'm going to take the first one. I made three of these just so I could um, just so I could in case something happened. So remember, we're going to coat these, and then we're going to coat a couple of the unshrunken ones so we can do exposure tests. I'm not going to do an exposure test because, like I said, hopefully everything's just fine, but we'll see. So we're going to put this down. We're going to 
get everything together and start coating it. And the coating is the same as before. So, here's the difference between this one and the first one. The first one, there wasn't really anything to worry about. With this one, we're concerned about the reaction that's going to happen with this next layer and the uh, tannins in this paper now. So, that means you want to have all your stuff ready. You want to have your brushes ready to over... Because you do not want this to be... You want to keep it wet for as little, as short a time as possible. So we're going to coat it. We're going to brush off the excess. We're going to let it sit for just a little bit flat. And then we're going to take it over and actually hold it in front of the fan for a few seconds just to help drive that moisture out a little faster. That's another important step for this layer. So this layer is all about prep. And then all we have to do is expose it and develop it in plain water. And hopefully that's it and we're done. So I'm going to start coating this one now. All right, so here we go. And you're going to notice, not at the very first second, but very quickly that the color starts changing wherever you're brushing. You'll notice an odd kind of a greenish blue color. And that's the interaction between the tannic acid and the cyanotype solution. Even though there's not a lot in there. Looks like I missed some. All right, so we're gonna get it in there. Brush it. Horizontal and vertical. Then quickly get any excess off of there. So we don't have any problems, so be sure to brush all that off. Get some spots on there. I think I got some loose fibers. Okay. So, that's brushed off. We're going to leave it this vertical for just a couple seconds, or maybe, you know, a few seconds or 30 seconds, whatever. Then I'm going to take it over to the fan and try to drive a little more of that moisture up before we hang it up to dry. So it laid flat for about, you know, 15, 20 seconds. And now we're going to hold it in front of a fan. I've got the fan maybe at medium speed just to help force some moisture out of it. You can already see the corners kind of a turning a bluish green color. And that's going to happen through the whole print to a certain extent, but I'm just going to hold it here, try to drive off some of that moisture. And once it doesn't look like damp, damp, once it just kind of calms down and isn't soaking wet, I'm going to hang it up to dry. So I held it in front of a fan at medium speed for about 20-30 seconds. Now it's hanging up to dry and you will notice that it will turn a little bit bluish green. The whole thing will, but we need to let this sit for... It needs to sit for a couple hours just so it's completely dry. So I'm going to let it sit and dry and then I'm going to put it in that little thing I have with the desk and bees just to keep it safe until we're ready to expose. Okay, so our second layer is dry, and we're ready to begin the final process. Um, I wanted to show you, this is our print. You're going to notice this weird, kind of an ugly color on it, and say, what happened, what's wrong. That's what it's going to look like, and that's why we did all, it would actually look worse. We just did all these steps to help mitigate that becoming worse. So... Don't worry, that's fine. It's been drying for about three hours. I wouldn't go, I would not dry these over four hours. I, on the first uh, layer, when you're just, dry, just um, drying the paper with the first layer emulsion, you can dry that and put it away and store it. I would suspect even dry, this interaction will continue to get worse, so don't go over four hours on this. Um, so now we're going to uh, get our negative put on and get on with the exposure. Okay, so now we got to get our negative together. Um, this is the cyan negative. Again, make sure you have the proper side down. In the last video, I said that that was a that was a uh, cyan and magenta or cyan and yellow combined. It's magenta and yellow combined. I got confused on that one, so ignore that. Um, 
but the trick to this is you have to make sure it's aligned properly and uh, I'm going to align this off camera just because I need to get it just right but you need your alignment marks to match perfectly otherwise the two layers will look weird so I'm going to get that aligned okay I have it aligned hopefully well it's kind of hard to tell I would suspect if you don't get the second layer emulsion over your marks it might be easier to see to line them up but you need to get them as close as possible that's very critical for the next layer or it won't look right it'll kind of have a weird blurry effect so I've got the glass on it I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to put the light on it and then uh, see we'll get the light on here and we're going to set this for 60 minutes because that's what I did in the one that worked so the first layer was 65 I'm going to set this one to 60 because that's what I did in the one that worked um, I would say it's 60 minutes give or take five minutes so there we go and I'll be back in 60 minutes and then we'll hopefully get to see the final result okay it's been just about 60 minutes this will go off in just a couple seconds and then we will pull the print out and develop it in plain cold water and hopefully everything went okay so this is the final step and we get to see if everything worked just right uh, any second now <laughs> Okay, we're going to take this off. And there it is. All right, now we're going to take this and we're going to rinse it in cold water and see what we get. Okay, so I know it doesn't look like much right now, but we're going to put, like I said, cold tap water. We're going to see what we get. Already, that's, that's, that is cool. Okay, so I'm going to be rinsing this a couple times. We're going to let it soak, let it rinse, do that a couple times and to get all the undeveloped emulsion out and then um, we'll see what it looks like and uh, we'll hang it up to dry all right now I've changed the water out a couple times I've even used some warm water just to help speed up getting the last of the emulsion out so I'm gonna drain it and we're gonna take this out and hang it up to dry uh, as excited as I am about this I'm not going to judge it till it's dried. Um, anyone who does these processes will tell you, you what you're seeing when it's wet isn't the correct thing. It, it has to dry and oxidize more. So again, final step, drying from the corner like I've done on all the other steps. Um, fan on low and my dehumidifier. We're going to let this dry. Um, it's going to change color when it dries slightly. The other thing to note is if you were going to display this print, um, you can coat it with like a Renaissance wax or I've heard of using like petroleum jelly. I haven't tried that yet. But you need to set this, let this sit for a week or two because in a week or two, the, contra or the, uh, the colors will shift slightly just from the chemicals oxidizing. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, so there you have it uh, I'm very happy with it and uh, I, I'm gonna figure out what the next video is <laughs> so thank you all for watching